I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. I hold to my own code, because I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. It was nine years ago. The wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common. A history of visits to one particular hospital. A hospital under the management of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. And my investigation had turned up evidence that Cradle had been involved in the kidnappings. After a little sweet talking, I managed to finally get a real lead from someone inside Cradle. My source told me this. Tonight, Tonight, a ship, a ship is set, set to take the children to a large, large passenger, passenger liner docked, docked offshore. offshore. So I headed to the wharf. From the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship it was talking about. There's I wonder if a I bunch can... of movement here. Can I skip this bit? Men in black no, suits, many of them carrying large bags. Bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. No doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. I moved before I realized it. I came out of hiding, my gun already in my hand. Don't move! I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. I could kill you right now. It'd be easy to get away with it, too. Just tie an anchor to your feet, and no one would find you for a week. That what you want? The fish here would love a meal. Kept digging the cold metal thing into my skull. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, there was a sharp pain in my neck. A needle. A drug? That was my last thought. My face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. <clears throat> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. I did a quick once over of the room. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink, a toilet with no privacy. I'd seen it countless times as a cop. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but... <clears throat> it won't open. <laughs> Not like I expected much else. Would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed. And sat... Hmm. Huh. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. Then, I heard a faint voice. The voice was far away. I couldn't understand what it was saying. But I could hear one. It was pretty high, probably a little kid. Huh? No, it was several. Huh. I hear five, or six, maybe more. Where? Where are they coming from? I pressed my ear to the wall and tried to listen through it. No, that's not it. Left. It's coming from under the bed? I hauled on the metal frame and flipped the thing over. And there it was. The bed had hidden an air vent under it. The hole in the wall was covered by a metal grate. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see shit, but I knew it in my gut. This was where those voices were coming from. Hold up. Why are there kids here? But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? All I knew was I had to get to those kids. I checked out the metal grate. Hmm. Could I fit? I stuck my fingers in and grabbed it. And then... Hey! 
<sighs> yeah. How do you like that, you son of a bitch? I finally got the damn thing off. Sweat was dripping down my face, so I wiped it off and crawled inside. The first bit or so was tight. I had a wriggle on my belly. It wind up eventually, and there was space for me to crawl along on my hands and knees. I went from crawling like a worm in dirt to skittering like a bug. Couldn't say it was much better, but I'd take what I could get. And when I'd been in the thing long enough to start wondering where it'd take me... A massive sound nearly scared the piss out of me. It was like a heavy metal door had just been slammed shut. Then, there was a voice. sure what it meant, but anything with incinerator is bad news. Then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess of young sounding voices. A bunch of them were straight up screaming in terror. And all the sounds together made a howl that made the hair on my neck stand straight up. Damn it! What the hell is going on here? I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket, but I didn't care at that point. I soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door open. I almost ripped the metal off its hinges. What the... What the hell is this place? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome up top. And there had to be about nine walls, all the same size. But the ceiling was an upside-down funnel. Almost like a chimney. I looked down. There they were. The kids I'd been searching for. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent, for the moment, from surprise and fear. Scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Probably both, actually. <laughs> Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. I snorted at my own digging myself and turned to the kids. Don't worry, kids, I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Well, except one. He was a boy slightly older than the others, in a private school uniform. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed some the second I got the words out. How are you gonna help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kinda cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're gonna be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's gonna start up soon. So... So... <laughs> voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to reach. What the hell was I gonna do? But then I got an idea. Wait right there. I'm gonna be right back. What? Where, where is he going? Are you just going to leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I tried to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right? I'll be back, I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there. Got it? I didn't wait to hear them respond. It wasn't time. I had to hurry. Well, as fast as a guy could on his hands and knees. Didn't take me long to get back to my cell. Still no way out of there, but I had a plan. I needed something from the room. When I got it, I dove back into the hole and took off towards the incinerator. Then, I 
Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down the rope I brought with me. Back in the cell, I tore in the bed sheets and the strips and tied them together to make a rope. It was sloppy, but it got the job done. Alright, just tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Right! Huh. Wait a sec. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said! Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them! Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the numbered door... He was in the middle of explaining when... Incineration will begin in five minutes. The wall shook a bit and a voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here! Uh, right! I grabbed onto the rope. First one I pulled on was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. A boy in a jacket came after her. He said he'd climb up on his own. He wore a uniform at the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast. But when it was almost to me, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? The door opened, and a man stepped in looking half mad with fury. I recognized his face. I saw him many times in photos during my investigation. The man's name was Gintaru Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo saw the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. He lunged for the rope. Hurry! I know! Boy in the uniform booked it up the road. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen feet. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the duck behind me. No! No! Hongo had lost it. But his face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the rope, leaving a furious Hongo yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? <laughs> Hey! Old man! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in a raging asshole's face before I closed the door behind me. No point to going back to the cell, so we went down the other direction instead. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. Where he nodded, and took turns sliding down it. The duct emptied us out into a narrow hallway. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right was familiar. It had black and yellow stripes and a device next to it on the wall. The plate on it read, Incinerator. Incinerator? Yeah, that's where we were. It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah. Mongo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in there... Yeah. That's not good. <sighs> that sounded like June. That meant we better. We gotta get out of here. Go to the other door. Hurry! 
The kids started running, and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spiral staircase. Run! Didn't need to tell them twice. And up and up and up. Feet pounding the steps, our arms pumping fast. Round and round and round, the devil was on the tail. The stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform suddenly spoke. Something's up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane. Akane. That's strange. I didn't remember seeing that name list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yelled. <laughs> Maybe we outran her. Boy in the uniform was getting to a stop. I stopped too. So did the other two kids. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. Maybe she took a rest in one of them? No, it's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. I gotta go look for her downstairs. He turned to go. Hey, kid, wait! God damn it, I said wait! I don't think the kid even heard me. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket and the girl with the ponytail. I'm going after him. You two keep going, all right? You got it? The girl nodded and ran up the stairs. With the boy. I'm going with you. <sighs> I didn't have time to argue. I just nodded and took off down the stairs. I could hear him following me. We ran all the way to the bottom floor, calling for her. Akane was nowhere to be found. God damn it! Where the hell did she go? I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... Help me! Somebody help me! We heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hallway by the incinerator. We rushed in after him. I couldn't for the life of me believe what we were seeing. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm and was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit, move! No, I don't want to! Let me go, please! Let go of me! She planted her feet squarely on the floor and was struggling to get away. But Hongo was bigger and stronger. She wasn't gonna win. Uh, Akane! Her brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. Help me! Ah! You're too late, idiot! Hongo lifted Akane bodily into the air and threw her, still fighting him, into the incinerator. Ah! Before we could even blink, Hongo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. And then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open. But... Ah! Fuck! It's no use! The goddamn thing won't move an inch! started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? You came back! Her voice was muffled, but all of us could hear the sheer terror in it. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door! W what? Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing! Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, alright? We're gonna figure out a way to save you! 
His words would have seemed like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. something out I promise I promise okay you hear me I promise it was torture listening to her sobbing on the other side of the door her brother was nearly crying himself he could only stand there this clenched so tight his knuckles were white <sighs> uh, what happened then come on man Put yourself in my shoes. It doesn't end good. You think I want to remember that? Then... Yeah. Shit. If I'd known it was gonna be like this, I almost wish I hadn't remembered. Hey, um, are you... are you sure? Huh? Look, I don't want to ask this either, but... There's... there's something I don't get. So if you could just tell me, did that girl, Akane, really... Yeah, I'm sure. There wasn't anything we could do. After a while, the countdown ended. And we heard something... burning. We... The fire stopped, but we still didn't move. Me and the jacket kid were frozen. The boy in the uniform collapsed as if he couldn't hold himself up anymore. A few minutes passed. The door opened. The boy in the uniform tripped over his own feet running in. We followed, too numb to speak. The air in the incinerator was hot. Every breath made my lungs feel like they were on fire. It was like standing on hot asphalt. The air was wavering and... And, in the middle of the room, there it lay. The kid's legs were shaking so bad, I don't know how he managed to walk. I couldn't see his face, but his body somehow looked empty. Finally, he reached it. He fell to his knees as his legs gave out on him. And then... Um, um, uh, can I ask you one more thing? What's that? The girl, Akane. What was her last name? What does it matter to you? Just, just tell me, okay? Please? Kurashiki. Her name was Akane Kurashiki. There that day, weren't you? The tall kid in the jacket. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You are correct, detective. Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> wow, that was. I didn't want to talk through it because, you know, I felt you just needed to watch it. But so I guess that the kid was Snake. Was the other one Santa? And I mean, she obviously didn't die because she's here right now. But was that also saying that she is Santa's sister? I'm, I'm confused. Don't misunderstand me. I told you before how Zero threatened me. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't say anything about what happened nine years ago. So you're saying you're not working for Zero, right? Of course not. Clover, what about you? Come on! You really think I'm working with Zero? I told you before, you idiot! I was in Nevada, in Building Q. 
I did hear that a detective rescued the kids on the boat, but I didn't know it was you. Well, I guess I believe you. All right, let me ask you another question. Santa's real name is Aoi Kurashiki. Yeah, it is Santa. He's Akane's brother. You know that? No! No, I didn't. Did you? Well, yes. I know Aoi Kurashiki was her brother. But I didn't know he was Santa. At least not from the beginning. Nine years ago, he was in the middle of puberty. His voice is entirely different now. I'm ashamed to say that even my exceptional hearing wasn't able to make that connection. As such, I had no reason to think Santa was Aoi. When did you figure it out? Clover told me that Santa might have been one of the subjects of the initial experiment. It was only a short while ago, while we were leaving the library. When she told me that, I had a... feeling. Santa is Aoi? Akane Kurashiki, June's brother? There's still a lot we don't know. I mean, like, a lot, a lot. But there is one thing I think we can say we know. What's that? The body we found in the shower room. It had to be Nijisaki, dressed up to look like Snake. What? Come on, man, what kind of detective are you? You didn't figure that out already? Hey, go easy on me, man. I just got my memory back, all right? Cut me some slack. Hmm. Well, if he is, the three murders make sense then, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Murder. Kubota blew himself up, but that was murder too. So why did these murders take place? If Junpei is correct, and the body in the shower room was Nijisaki's, that means all of the people who were murdered were involved with the creation of the Nonary Project. Kubota, the person who conducted the actual experiments. Nijisaki, Hongo's assistant. Musashido, the man who financed the project. You mean this was all just revenge? Santa is zero. He's getting revenge for the death of his sister. That's why he killed them. No, I, I don't think Santa actually murdered anyone. If I'm right, then it's not hard to figure out who the next victim's gonna be, is it? I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. Yes. Yep. Right. The next target will be Gintaro Hongo. The person who planned the Nonary Project. In other words, Ace. What? Whoa, what the hell's going on here? It must be 6 a.m. Our time is up. 